Welcome to the France and Cat debate. Facebook, like it? Hate it? You can't escape it. The original social network has links everywhere. And on this, it's 15th birthday, we're asking how is Facebook doing in its difficult adolescence? 15's a difficult age, isn't it? 2018 was very much a tough year for Facebook. Data hacks, personal account details, mined by suspicious online shady characters. Facebook already the bete noire then of the authorities with an eye on fake news. Prime reason, of course, for a whole revamp of worldwide data protection to patch up that particular problem. An ongoing problem it is too. Now, for all the talk of problems, Facebook has undoubted reach and influence. 2.27 billion users. I don't know how many noughts that is. Can't be all wrong after all, can they? Profit of over $55 billion. That's 37% up on the previous year. 2018 then a difficult year. The bank balance, though, may make things feel a little bit better. For that gentleman there, Mark Zuckerberg, the man who invented the whole thing back in his student days. Wonder if he knew back then how big it would become. Our guest to discuss the next stage for Facebook. Here in the studio, Mathieu Garin from Wavestone, expert in cybersecurity. Sir, thank you for joining us. Hello. We get a thumbs up and a like for Mathieu. <laughs> Another thumbs up for Reina Stamboliska, co-founder of Defensive Lab Agency, Data Security Strategist. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having Last me. Last but not least, Nadim Kobesi who's a crypto cryptographer. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I teach that. Good man. Yeah. You, you know about things like algorithms and how they work, don't you? That's part of a computer science. I'm looking forward to you explaining that to me because I don't know how they work. So thank you, sir. Bear with us yes. because we'll bring you all in after, well, the story so far from Shirley Sipon here at France 24. Facebook, created in 2004. One year later, it already had one million members, and even then, few could predict it could get as big as it is today. Aged 15, it has 2.3 billion friends. Friends with a lot of valuable personal data, which the company uses for targeted advertising. For critics, that's one of Facebook's drawbacks. Remember, the business model is Stay addicted to the platform, give us as much data as you possibly can, let us sell that data to the advertisers, the advertisers pay us money, which allows you to give, give you lots of really cool free technology services. In 2016, a new type of threat emerged. Companies, corporations or individuals who have used a platform maliciously to spread hatred, fake news and collect information to manipulate users. Like in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Senate figures show 126 million users read contents shared by Russian intelligence. But it's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake news, for foreign interference in elections and hate speech, as well as developers and data privacy. As Facebook hits 15, it plans to keep expanding. Despite critics, it took a record $22 billion profit last year. Reports say it could next merge its smartphone messaging apps, Messenger, WhatsApp and Instagram. Each one has some 1 billion users. Shall we sip on there? Facebook then marches on. Let's bring in our uh, guests to discuss uh, what happens next. Is it in good shape? What needs to improve? What it does right? What it does wrong? Starting with Mathieu, in terms of uh, your take on what Facebook is doing and how it's doing, uh, where do you stand? Well, it's, it's pretty strange mm. because as we, as we saw, the profits are going up, but um, basically uh, people don't really trust Facebook. I was saying to Paul just before coming, like about 51% of French people don't trust Facebook. But what we see uh, the, 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 is that it gets more and more users. So what it shows is that Facebook has become essential to people's life. And that might be the problem. Like they don't really take into account what they know about the lack of privacy. So that might be the problem with Facebook. So it will have to deal with that in the next coming years. How can I keep on dealing with this service? Um, uh, as, as, as my users know, perfectly know that I'm not doing things really right in terms of privacy. It's one of those things that once upon a time when you would have gone to see somebody or phone them up, now you just ping them a message on Facebook and that's how you communicate, yeah. uh, Rani. Is that, is that one of the things you find about Facebook? It sort of gets in the way of people really interacting? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's become a totally integral part of our everyday use. I mean, if you decide to delete Facebook, you know, to go 
to go off Facebook, for many that would mean a total social exclusion. Yeah. You know? And so while we are discussing um, different challenges about privacy, about intimacy, about security and so on, uh, the, the real question is there, how much am I ready to give up on to to protect my privacy and my data and so on. I mean, I'm not been on, I have not been on Facebook for like years and I'm not, not in contact with a lot of friends that I used to have to be in touch with. And so do you feel or, isolated? Well, not that much because, you know, life change, <clears throat> connections go and, 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 and come. However, you know, you cannot require this out of everyone just because you know your requirement for for privacy protection is yours and only yours you need everyone like needs to have um their capacity and their ability to have their own requirements for privacy you know enforced and here is where i guess we are starting off a debate um and bringing it to a next stage where okay how do I do if I disagree with the way that Facebook treats my personal data? What do I do? Yeah, uh, yeah indeed. Uh, you can either sort of like just basically click delete and get off it or... Yeah, that's, you know, that's the very much like very strong um, take up. However, if I decided to go, you know, the legal way, um, am I up to the challenge? Am I up to enforcing my fundamental rights to privacy? Uh, do I know how to speak? to speak legalese, am I up for the challenge to take up on Facebook? There's also the issue of paying a lawyer, isn't there, as well, which is, you know, it, it's not cheap to prosecute, is it? No, it's not. And I mean, you need to have this decision uh, taken seriously and in true faith and, you know. Sure. Uh, there are some very positive aspects about Facebook. I mean, for instance, I mean, I've had sort of family members who I didn't know send me mm -hmm. photos that, you know, my dad sent to them when I was a kid and I've never seen these photographs in my life. And that's kind of like brought a family thing to me, which is precious and wonderful. And that's one of those things I think is positive. Um, let's bring in Professor of uh, Computer Science from NYU Paris, Nadim Kobesi, to give us more on this one, because I mean, clearly with your specialism and your, your view, I wonder whether you're um, interpretation or your feeling of what Facebook does is different from what we've just heard? My specialty on this topic doesn't matter at all. What matters is rather that the discussion with regards to privacy has never been between Facebook and the majority of its users. That has that ne never happened and it's never going to happen. Mm. Uh, the majority of Facebook users, which is now, it's like a science fiction novel, the majority of the earth, uh, is not, uh, doesn't have the time, is not equipped to actually go and talk in the um, a liberal cultural framework of Facebook to go to them and start having this uh, debate about privacy and about rights and about what's going on with their data. The, that discussion has always been exclusively between Facebook and critics, analysts, lawyers, mm -hmm. scientists, commentators, media people, journalists, people who are specialized, which actually are very few in number if you mm -hmm. look at the larger view. Uh, what's happened now is that Facebook has continued to grow using a very efficient, uh, very efficient Roman uh, uh, military tactics uh, developed by Julius Caesar and um, uh, Heracles and all of that. They, this is what they've been doing. They've been doing that admirably. We are, we have lost uh, us, the people in this room. And for, we are hecklers at this point. We're yelling at Facebook from the peanut gallery. We don't have any effectiveness. Uh, our words are, you know what, you know what actually we've been reduced to? We've been reduced to essentially just uh, placating someone who's out there in the general public in France or in Europe who is uneasy about Facebook, but at least they can turn on the TV and watch us complain about it. <laughs> and then they'll feel, well, you know what? The world isn't so bad after all. If I continue to use Facebook, at least there's, you know, a bunch of guys uh, and a lady and uh, they, they all, they're, they're complaining. So, hey, you know what? I can just continue friending people on Facebook and everything. But we, we are completely ineffective. We are completely powerless. We've lost. We're combating a behemoth that's so much more powerful than us. Uh, we've been reduced to some little sideshow. Uh, nothing that we say here and nothing that we've said about Facebook that I, I this is the fifth time I've been here talking about Facebook, we need to make the algorithms more open. We need to um, have more uh, appeal. We need to expand stuff like the GDPR, initiatives like the GDPR. We need to educate users. I've tried to approach this from every possible angle. 
what am I seeing? Anyone, any, any concerted effort that has tried to attack Facebook, that has tried to not just attack, but rather engage in it, uh, motivate it to adopt uh, practices that are against its profit motives, but more in line with people's rights? This guy who was like uh, unfriend Facebook or move beyond sure, Facebook sure. Uh, had his uh, had his uh, Semitic heritage used against him in an anti-Semitic smear campaign uh, that uh, Facebook conducted. This was published in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. I, it sounds like I'm making it up, but I'm not. And any sort of group that's been out there trying to talk about Facebook in a way that's effective has been radicalized, has been uh, strawmanned, has been discounted, ignored, bought out. Uh, even the hard hitters that I considered, like someone who I have a lot of respect for, um, Nate Cardozo, Nate Cardozo. who uh, used to be, a, he's, he's, he's an incredible lawyer and an excellent uh, uh, privacy advocate. Now he's working for Facebook at WhatsApp. He's the director of privacy policy. That is, information like this comes to me and I'm just unable to understand how to fit it into what comes next in part of the narrative. Is, is Facebook, as a matter of fact, trying to it feels to me, it just feels to me like some kind of like political, like sort of assimilation, like co-opting, what's the word? Um, like just a consolidation of power. Uh, it's, of almost, like, it's almost the, like the Gauls, like, like, like go a, like get the and bring some, him some, in. Some, yes. some sort of a cult status in some way, the way you describe it, it's how it feels. It's kind of like everyone gets converted and works towards a certain end. Well, yeah, Facebook's yeah. privacy policy doesn't have like some something egregious in it or WhatsApp's uh, privacy policy. Maybe it'll end up not offending those people, and that's that's a good thing. That's fundamentally, that's a good thing. But ultimately, this is the level that we're at. This is how far we've lost. We're so completely just hopeless. And we can keep mm. discussing this as much as we want, but you, the viewer, if you're listening, this is all a show because we've been completely powerless to affect how Facebook behaves in any way. Like you can have someone who looks smart, like me, come here and talk, <laughs> like, yeah, algorithms, man, or I can come and tell you, yeah, we should work more on the GDPR. This is all nonsense. We've been completely unable to stop Facebook's effect on just expanding on like, I'm, I'm looking, I'm hitting my 30s soon. I'm looking to buy an apartment soon. So I started searching for uh, like mortgage rates and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And like on Instagram, I'm getting just, and it's, it's just, how? How? It's that I'm not even signed into that any spooky of these thing things. About, that spooky thing about adverts, when you sort of right. find yourself looking at something. I was looking at some sportswear for one of my kids, and all of a sudden I get hit on body with adverts for those things yeah. from different brands on my that's, Facebook page. That's Facebook's and business model. I find that really difficult. Tell us what yeah. your experience of that. That's Facebook's business model. I mean, it, it creates a need for you to consume goods or services or both. And the more you consume, the better. So the more you give data, the better... Facebook and its what zillion data brokers that sure. are connected to it know you. And so the faster you get to, you know, uh, visualize why you were reading New York Times or Le Figaro, whatever mm -hmm. you're reading, the, the your favorite pair of shoes, your favorite tie and so on and so forth. And so that's how and we basically gave up on our fundamental rights for the unnecessary now totally indispensable need of consuming always, you know, better targeted shoes and, you know, more specific ties and whatnot. So if, yeah. we, if, so if we didn't shop online, we wouldn't go via this behemoth that, that uh, Nadine was talking about, obviously describing Facebook in that way, because clearly this is what it's doing. It's hoovering up everyone's data. It's hoovering up everybody's likes, dislikes and using it as a, as a marketing tool. Yes. Like yeah. yeah, and that's, that's the problem. I mean, uh, that's why, like, when we can shoot as loud as possible, like, nothing happens. Uh, I, I agree with that. The problem is that... We all agree on that. <laughs> their business model that we're trying to uh, deal with. The problem is that uh, each time we show that there's a privacy problem, mm -hmm. all right, we get a, I'm sorry. We get a, I'm sorry from Mark Zuckerberg or whoever. But the problem is that they won't change because... It's their business model that we're targeting. It's not a matter of cybersecurity. I know this topic, mm. and they don't get hacked. Of course, there were there were one or two hacks last year, but it's not the big deal. The problem is that everybody realized how they were working. Like like the fact that they were opening their data to partners. That's Cambridge Analytica. The mm. fact that they are using their uh, your data in order to 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 bring some targeted ads. It's their business model. So so they have.
there there's no chance uh, no no chance to really move into that and to mm -hmm. persuade anyone. They have to to rebuild. I mean their 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 business model in order to address new markets and new ways of working. Because or else still we will uh, shoot. I would say uh, with no effect. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Because it's like it's like it's like it's Orwellian but with a smiley face. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is you get, sorry, you no. get also a very, um, it's not even a smiley face. Sometimes you don't even get a face. Or a thumb. Yeah, but sometimes it's even worse. Like what came up last week was this Project Atlas story. Yeah. You know, like f in, f since 2018, we are moving forward with leak by leak, learning more and more horrendous things, but that's not science fiction, that's science misfiction. I mean, that's, that's total dystopia we are living in, where Facebook pays, you know, 13-year-old kids 20 bucks a month so that it can sniff all their traffic and, you know, um, monitor competitors and their, you know, their use level by, by people on their phones. And you get other and more, even scarier things that are... Um, technology bricks that are included in um, in mobile apps, which, regardless of whether you have um, a f yeah a, um, a feature related to Facebook Connect, like whatever, this technology brick basically sniffs all your data and sends it to Facebook. With my company, we've analyzed um, different apps. For example, we had an app where um, it helps young mothers monitor the baby they just had. Sure. So you can check in whether you breastfed, whether that that's artificial milk, whatnot. You know, that's the femtech mm. story thing. And so in this app, you have this technology brick, which is totally invisible to users. You don't have any, like, login, whatever button in there. However, this technology brick silently and without your knowledge sends everything related to your newborn baby to Facebook. We found this technology brick totally invisible in apps that are related to connected objects such as tensiometers. You know, why the heck is Facebook interested in my heart rate? You know, like, why? And so on and so forth. You know, there is a big difference between having a place, having a platform where I can befriend or unfriend people and say it's complicated with my partner and this situation where the, the very aggressive expansion is even despite us, despite ourselves, taking totally over. The other side of the social network lives. exposed by our three guests. This is... Uh Exciting stuff, scary stuff as well. I'm feeling a little bit uneasy about what I'm learning here. Thank you all for part one. Stay with us, part two coming up very shortly. Welcome back to the France 5 debate. We're debating Facebook like at 15 years of age. Is it a troubled adolescence or is it the start of a more profitable period leading to maturity? Or do we have things to be scared of? Because our guests, I think, do feel that way indeed. Will Facebook continue to balance its multi-billion dollar profits with its highly embarrassing fake news and data breaches? Or worse, if you believe our guests, and believe me, I believe them. We'll be talking about cyberbullying, psychological manipulation, political influence, all those kind of things, trend setting, sex lives, video tech, you name it. Our guests have got takes on all of this and more. I think we should have takes on less things. Our takes are... For Twitter, not for our viewers. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, Matthew Guerin is senior manager at Wavestone, expert in cybersecurity. Reina Stambuliski is uh, an innovative data-driven strategist and author of La Face Cachée de l'Internet. And Nadim uh, Kobesi is professor at NYU Paris uh, of computer science. Uh, Nadim, we were talking about uh, a lot of issues. Uh, and clearly, I, I get the sense that you feel what we have on Facebook is this massive monster that's out of control. Uh, can we deal with something like fake news now in this section? Tell us, you know, how does that happen? How is it allowed to happen? Why can't it be stopped? Describing, fake, uh, describing Facebook as a monster sort of absolves it of certain responsibilities because we can see it as a big nebulous thing that we can't account for. But actually, it's an extrajudicial authority that has become uh, essentially its own nebulous um, 
a metaphysical nation state that doesn't really exist anywhere, but has more powerful than any of the ones that we have, uh, France, maybe United States, who knows, doesn't have an army, but in a sense doesn't need one. Um, fa uh, Google, for example, I've argued before, has uh, a chokehold on uh, any English information that we might care to learn about. We're going to go to Google first. What happens if that algorithm is uh, biased in some way? No one knows. No one wants to even think about that. The question is dismissed by the people who shouldn't be dismissing it. Let's look at Facebook when it comes to fake news. Um, Facebook recently announced that they want to actually unify WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger, their three major products, into a single giant messenger. Now, the um, uh, knee-jerk uh, reaction to that could be, well, what about my privacy? Facebook has an answer to that. All of the messages sent on this new um, chimeric messenger are actually encrypted, right? Great, end-to-end -end encryption. That's what we've been advocating for for years. People like me should be happy, right? That's completely a way to sidestep the question. The real question is what happens to all of the enormous amounts of social relationships that it's able to gather? How is that used to influence what you learn about from whom? And based on who you've learned about, about which just yesterday, how is that used to influence what you see and what decisions you're going to make? And who is the, uh, and are those decisions, are your future decisions open to the highest bidder? Mm -hmm. So it becomes a question about who can control my attention on the one medium that I'm using to, inter to, to interact with anyone else, even in my private circles, because private messaging is about interacting with friends. Mm -hmm. Google has that ability to essentially uh, uh, decide arbitrarily if it wants to to see what I'm looking for if I search for information online but what about my relationships fake news becomes um, or rather just the dissemination of news from uh, arbitrary sources fits into that it's part of the entire shift from us being able to just have multiple platforms to interact into a single platform that's completely unaccountable that operates by its own rules that's not held by anything or anyone I have a really important suggestion for anyone who's listening and who's understanding that none of our gibbering is getting us anywhere. How about the, we ban targeted advertising? A ban in the European Union on targeted advertising. Make targeted advertising illegal. Why hasn't this been considered? Because on television it would be, it would be made, it would be restricted in some way. Because there's, there's, there's Television doesn't have targeted advertising. But there's always been the argument about you can't put certain things out at certain times because kids are watching, or they'll target certain things towards children at a certain time, that kind of thing. And that goes on. That is, that is but it's infinitely not the same more thing, docile and acceptable. There's a difference. You, are, you have so m fewer bits of information about mm. the people. You, you're, well, all right, children are going to watch Saturday morning cartoons. Sure. I, don't think that's, I think that society as a whole evolved to accept that. I don't think we can, we can have a debate about is it okay to target. But, but you're Facebook, saying this goes further into what people, what's going on in people's minds, absolutely. what people are doing, every choice I they mean, make. It's, it's completely incomparable. And we're all victims. They, they're able to understand what I'm looking for, what are what my financial, emotional, sure. personal, uh, career level desires are. They're monitoring your internet activity. They're able to harvest all of that information by virtue of you using their platforms to do anything. And based on that, they can just essentially offer your attention literally up for bidding by the highest bidder. People, companies can just bid the highest amount on your attention personally based on your demographic, based on where you come from, your age group, the languages that you speak, the kind of job that you have, your income. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is ban targeted advertising, make that impossible. You want to target people based on the kind of platforms mm -hmm. that they use as someone on social media, are they, that's fine. But the amount of just psychological leverage on that stuff. And by the way, TV ads are much more regulated. There's a lot of uh, stuff yes, that Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even, even, even the volume can't be raised above the volume of the sure. regular TV show. Sure. Uh, so I don't think that's a reasonable Let comparison. me bring in Matthew to sort of, again, sort of I'll start again with fake news and see where we go. I mean, obviously, from what uh, Nadim's saying, stopping fake news, it sounds like an impossibility. Yeah, I just, I just want to, I don't think targeted ads are the, I'm sorry. I, no, I no, go ahead, have, go ahead. But I don't think it's the solution. Like, once you, you, you ban that, you will ban something else. Like, it's, it's an example of what's not working. Like, we have GDPR in Europe. We didn't really talk about it here. And let's just make people aware of, what they're, uh, of how we use their data. Let's just be transparent, get their consent when, uh, uh, when, they, when we use their data, and, and let's just apply GDPR, and it will be a first step. I mean, this regulation was well known, is, is well balanced, and now the problem is to make sure that Facebook is going to apply it. That's that's the point. Like we saw that many have applied the GDPR. Yeah. 
uh, I, I get uh, hundreds and hundreds of little buttons on websites clicking, I must agree to consent, and I never have time to read all of yeah, them. Yeah, that's the problem. And that's the bet that no one is going to read any of these things. I agree. That's, that's how Everyone goes straight work. to accept. And the financial that's the problem, motive, let's make, say, make, throw the motivator out the window. It's actually the same as the one that motivates fake news. The reason why fake news works so well is because of filter bubbles. I log into mm. Facebook. I love the Republican Party so, yeah. or, or something. So I'm, yeah. I'm just I gonna... think it's a little, just a little bit more yeah. complex. I'm the problem see... is that yeah. I, I understand your point. Sure. I, I really sure. understand your point. But the fact is that some people prefer those targeted ads yeah. than any ads. That's the problem. People like just... to hear what they believe in. They like to hear things. You get that sort of community thing where it all goes into a vortex and they all yeah, start believing the same things. Have... And it all, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it it festers away I, together, I doesn't it? Humans no, over the centuries than... have had many instincts that we've been forced to get rid of by yeah. rote <laughs> discipline. We were, I mean, killing each other in, in using spears a few thousand years ago. We were burning witches at the stake yeah, but because... Take, take of... a look at Google. Like, Google just got fined $50 million by... Uh, uh, by, by, anyway. by the CNIL here in France, and, 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 and basically for the reason that you mentioned, because it was not transparent enough. People gave their consent on things that they don't, didn't really understand. Well, if we start to have fines about $50 million maybe tomorrow, much more than that, then it might help. I mean, we have to apply this GDPR thing. Yeah. Can, I just, here, yeah. can, can, can I bring in Raina? General yeah. Data Protection Regulation is what GDPR stands for, in case you were wondering. Yeah. Do you have faith in it? Oh yeah, completely. Seriously? I mean, I'm, I'm like a total nerd about GDPR. I mean, <laughs> why? Because <laughs> I'll give you a lecture, like personal lecture. Yeah. For Go ahead. Please do, please do, please do. Um, but you know, why? Because this regulation, however vague it can be here and there, however, you know, difficult it can be to get, you know, explained to a lot of people, it still helps people somehow fight the disequilibrium that exists between huge organizations which consider that they are above the law. And reminder, nobody is above the law. How we enforce this is another question. Um, but this regulation helps people, you know, get a bit a grip with their fundamental rights. If I read a newspaper, you know, the, the, the shift and why so few people are actually interested, you know, and actually comprehend technology today is, A, because we have had an, an incredibly quick shift between me reading a newspaper at the bar and, well, the bartender knows that I read the newspaper. Full stop. Me reading a newspaper on the internet, you know, on the web, well, uh what thousand uh, data brokers, you know, intermediaries know that I read this, how much, uh, you know, how long I stayed on the page, whatnot, and so on. The, the difference is there. And the more we make things complex, because we want to disrupt and innovate and you name it, the more actually difficult it becomes for people to understand. Where GDPR comes to help, or to the rescue, if we would like to be like really optimistic, is that GDPR forces you not only to understand what personal data is, but also forces organizations to make their privacy policies human readable. Because we have all lied at least once in our lives by clicking, I have read and agreed, <laughs> you know, the privacy policy and the conditions of use. We all do this. Today, we need to stop, you know, this hermetic language being, you know, thrown at us it's every just, time it's, we it's, click. It's, it's big brother stuff. I'm just pausing you a second. We have a, a tweet coming in uh, from uh, AJ Badu. I'll read it out. It's been, ch it's been a checkered 15 years for Facebook, despite the recent controversies about data use and privacy. Privacy. Mm. It uh, taught us new ways to express and connect. Its influence on youth culture, civic engagement and politics is undeniable. Anybody? I completely well, agree with this. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think this yeah. is, yeah. The social impact is huge. Mm. No, no one here is arguing that Facebook's, uh, we, we aren't even equipped to argue uh, mm. uh, effectively to say Facebook has been good or bad mm. over mm. the past 15 years. What we're talking about today is that so many of the defining problems of 2019 are either caused by Facebook or mostly just really influenced by Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about, we, we've all accepted Facebook has uh, changed the world, great. 
Um, I certainly think that many of the points that you guys made mm -hmm. with regards to how you're able to connect with people on Facebook, mm -hmm. no one here is just going out and saying you should burn it with fire. What we're saying is that there's a new world that exists because of it. Mm -hmm. And that's a world that comes with a lot of problems. Since we are always attempting to improve the world, we're trying to address these problems. Yeah. And the question is, how do we you know, get this? And how do we address the problem? How do we actually enforce you know, our rights and my desire to say, if I would like to, you know, I would like to approach other adults on Facebook and I don't know, flirt with them or catch a fling with them. Now, this is silently totally prohibited by recently established um, community standards and this is included even sexually yeah tainted slang is between adults mm. is explicitly prohibited on facebook now you know how can i actually opt in for some things and opt out of other things i would like to connect with friends okay i would agree that because to do this Facebook would have certain knowledge of who I interact with and how often I talk to this person or that person. Say that's more or less agreeable. I do not, however, want to have Facebook or Messenger or you name it, know that I prefer that kind of shoes, that I have had a baby, that that baby is a girl and no, 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 no. You know, all, all the things that Facebook actually knows despite us. So how do I enforce, you know, this very granular um, thing of I want to connect with people, I want to discuss certain topics with people, and that's it. I don't know. I mean, I've got an, an old thing. You know? when, when I'm in front of one of these microphones, mm. in front of that camera, I don't say anything or share anything. Mm. I don't want to share with the entire planet. Mm. So that's probably my failsafe, I suppose, in terms of how I do my job. And I suppose I should do that when I do Facebook, should Yeah, I? no, yeah. that's great. That's exactly yeah. how, that's that's how I take it. That's great advice for everyone. It yeah. works. <laughs> yes. Think of what you'd like to, to tell to anyone. And would you accept, you know... Because with these things, we're never alone. That's the message I'm getting from you guys. And that's <laughs> yeah. a very scary thing to... There's a think. point that was made earlier that I'd like to touch on. Go ahead, on. please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, well, we all like the UN Declaration of Human Rights. It's very important. We also like Droit de l'Homme uh, here in France, the whole thing. It's very pretty. It's got some nice drawings of angels breaking chains, and I find romanticism great. But uh, thinking that... Um, Thinking that that's going to uh, solve, uh, for example, abuse and, and torture and human, tra and human trafficking is the same as thinking that the GDPR is going to solve the problems, the enormous problems that are affecting the whole world, that are causing social upheaval and um, instability that Facebook is uh, uh, causing or reinforcing. Mm -hmm. These things are great. These laws are great to have. They serve as guiding principles for the higher echelons of not, I would say, power, but of order, of, of, of getting things done, of, of, of influencing how societies are formed and how to continue to operate. However, um, for every one time that uh, you, you were informed by how a news site is uh, mm -hmm. dealing with your data, you did actually read it before you click on the agree stuff. Because of the GDPR, for every bit of information that was dealt with that way, there's a ton of stuff that's coming from um, that sensor that you talked about earlier for children, but as well as all of the real social relationships that all the time. We're, we're clicking that button. We feel informed in one way. And what I'm saying here is that ultimately, until more serious action is taken, uh, this is all a deception. Uh, Facebook still doesn't have an identified competitor. When Zuckerberg was testifying in front of Congress, one very astute senator uh, from, from a southern state, I believe, um, uh, asked him, you know, who are your competitors? Uh, and Facebook, you know, we, we have many competitors, but I'm not at liberty. To, uh, there's, uh, there's no real answer. No one really knows uh, who their competitors are. Um, when it comes to, you know, is it time for you to be broken up? Is it a monopoly? How about actually being subjected to laws and the way that you treat data? Mm -hmm. Laws informing people who don't want to be informed or don't have time to be informed. That's what the GDPR is ending up being, even though it didn't start that way. Um, we need laws that target, you know, will Google search algorithms be made more accountable and more open and more verifiable by legitimate democratic authorities? And the same thing needs to apply to Facebook. I'm just, just not just hating on Facebook here. I'm saying no, no, the entire I've, internet. I'm hearing the whole sort of kind of theme is across the board. Can I, can I bring you back to the, I'm sorry to say this again, the fake news thing though, because obviously mm -hmm. we're looking at elections being influenced. We're looking at that sort of, you know, the obviously the Trump victory was said to be mm. influenced by 
the Russians. We're talking about similar issues with the Brexit referendum uh, in the UK. We're talking about similar issues with the French elections. Reina. Well, my point with fake news is joining up what was said I mean, this, this is all fascinating. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to sort of focus a little on that for, just for a few the, minutes. The fake news thing is, to me, pretty much a question of how much have I developed a critical mind? Because today, since anyone can speak out, any source is equitably important and trust, no. trustworthy. Well, people see it written down. They see it on, the, on, a, they see it on a little no. screen and they think it's something and, and, like the truth. That's, and that's then the issue, you yeah? get, yeah, and then you get, I don't know who is speaking, but that doesn't mean that having someone's full name and, you know, personal address and the person being totally not anonymous will help. Uh, if I don't know how to qualify, how to decide and to weed, you know, to weed out the bullshit. Well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to, 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 to put this distrust and this decision making into a gatekeeper such as, I don't know, Google, not to name it, you know, or into Facebook? Do, should I put this uh, decision making into Facebook to protect me against who? Against my friends? Because I think I think people watching this, I mean, certainly from my level of, of, of the understanding, and you guys have a far greater, broader sense of what this is about than I do. But I think people watching this from my perspective are thinking, well, how can I trust what I see? How can this get through if it's lies? Why is this allowed to happen? And who can stop it? And it sounds to me like there's, there's no guarantee on any of those issues at all. In the old what? days, we used to so, have editors. We can I give Matthew a go? Sure. Go, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say, in, yeah, in the old days, I would say uh, you, you had you had. I'm still in the old days. I think you the had problem, newspapers. Isn't it? You still have them, but you don't read necessarily. The editorial responsibility is exactly. now mm. falling on Facebook. And, and the way that Facebook editorializes content is which content is getting more engagement. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Content that is inflammatory. Engagement for you. For yeah. you. So yeah. meaning we're coming back to the yeah. data because... Sure. They know that you're going to click on it, so they're mm. going to give it to you. So I went yeah. to journalism school. I learned that certain things should be done by law, certain things should be balanced. That's got nothing to do with what happens at Facebook no. at all. It's mm -hmm. that, that's all complete nonsense, and it's a different way of judging things. I'm getting that completely. Yeah. Exactly. And then, and then you get the whole, you know, um, trust thing. So that that relates to bubbles. It's not that much of a question of a bubble that I only want to see content that I like. Mm. That's one side of things. But other is if my friend whom I trust because he or she is my friend, mm. shared it. So it should be good. So I'm not asking. I'm not, you know, looking critically at things. I'm just, okay, if it's good for them, then it's good for me. As and then it goes on and goes on. But then, but, but then Facebook is trying to do something. Like they, they announced that they have a war room. They removed fake accounts. They, they're doing a lot of things. The problem is that Facebook is doing it. It's mm. not uh, any... Authority. It's or, not. It's not. A, yeah. It's not a policing so they body. They decide it's Facebook what is policing good, itself. What is true and what is false. So yeah. is it Facebook's role? The question has to be be asked. But at least they try to do something around that. Okay, so they're trying, but it's like you say, it's like the police force investigating the police yeah. force if there's a police issue, and that obviously isn't viable or feasible yeah. Yeah, or I credible. Mean, do you want? Facebook to tell which is a private company that has its own sure, business no. interests and that considers that a female nipple is sexually explicit content. Do you want them to tell you what is politically true, what is politically legit? And, you know, that's the question. But actually, that ethics. So, 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 ethics. so clearly they banned the La Liberté portrait by Delacroix from... French Revolution yes. because there's a, a breast is that actually yeah. happened or is that an example? I'm just, I'm just kind of just, I'm just bringing that out as a possibility. Yeah. I presume they do or that. Or the but... Courbet, um, well, I would, yeah, uh, painting, <laughs> the origin of which, the world one, yeah. which clearly is, which is... was absolutely totally pornographic, of course, as everyone knows. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like I mean, but no, that's 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 a real thing. I mean, we are giving um, our critical look at the world in the hands of people who basically have a very certain moral system that they want to enforce and they achieve that that thing just by the masses you know and by the fact that we ourselves decide to you know to give up on this and to say okay well if it's decided for me uh well they should know better so i'm good so what i'm hearing is that f f in terms of fake news cyberbullying any kind of uh, manipulation going on on facebook it isn't there isn't much to be, well, there are no, very few reasons to be cheerful from this, this conversation. These things perhaps cannot be stopped. It's very difficult to do that. You need humans. You, you need techno solutionism has never been, you know, a tool will never solve or 
at least I need like an actual example that a tool I suppose it's the human thing because the full humans yeah. used it in the right way. So it's human nature that essentially is the bribing, corrupting mechanism. But or the dysfunctional yeah. one. But that's the reason why we, we focus so, so much on data. I think 2018 mm. is the data year for Facebook mm. between the, the mm. different mm. hacks and the, the data abuse that we talked about. The, their topic currently is more data than mm -hmm. uh, elections that were a few years ago, even though it's still a problem for them. But I think the, the big focus now is on data. Mm -mm. We're running out of time. I'd like to know uh, fr from, you, from all three of you whether you think there'll be another 15 years of Facebook and how that 15 years will go. Bear in mind, we haven't got a lot of time. So, Nadine, can I start with you, sir? Um, I, don't, I don't have any comments on that. I don't know whether Facebook's going to be here in 15 years, most likely, but I think I'm rather more concerned with the problems now. Okay. I would rather have um, real, real effective measures taken on um, restricting uh, the incentives to gather that much data since we've been completely powerless. Who, who's, uh, who's got to do that? I think uh, legislators, uh, international legislators, uh, the United States uh, Congress and Senate, the European Union, the United Nations, I think that certain things need to be set in stone. Search algorithms need to be made open and auditable and verifiable. Um, Maybe it's too harsh to say that targeted advertising needs to be banned. Maybe some compromise can be found. But I, I'm, I'm just saying that nothing that we've tried has actually had any effect on reducing Facebook's just conquering of the entire space. Mm -hmm. And we've been reduced to talking heads who just don't really have anything meaningful. Well, meaningful, yes, but effective. <laughs> no, nothing effective is I coming out of I don't feel at all discussion. insulted. 2018. It's the truth. 20, and I'm no, saying I, it because I get that it completely. needs to change. We need to make these discussions <laughs> effective. They're, they're, we're talking so much about this. But when we talk about it, we say, oh, maybe it's up to user education. Maybe it's up to the algorithm being made open. Maybe we should be more critical about the way that Facebook operates. Maybe it's the fake news uh, and how it's spreading that's actually causing the problem. No matter how many angles we target this from, it doesn't go through. Nothing is changing. Facebook has a sort of complete cultural and political hegemony on the entire space. And I'm just saying, well, go for the jugular. Talk about what's causing all of those financial incentives. Because ultimately, like, there needs to be and this isn't because Facebook is some kind of hegemon that is evil, but rather because of the just seriousness of the political negative effects, there needs to be an effective and organized resistance. And social effects too, Mathieu. That's the, not the, the effect on people is bad too. Yeah. Well, my opinion is that Facebook will still be here in 15 years. All right. I think it's going to be here, but it will change. It might change. be running the world. Yeah. <laughs> it probably is running the world. Of course it is. It might be well, president somewhere. But um, uh, the, 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 the thing is that, of course, they will have to change their business model. I think something happened. I think GDPR uh, helped in Europe. We see a, a, a large thing getting out everywhere in the world around privacy. We, we see the U.S. talking about it. The Congress, for example, was a good example. While people are, are well, something started here. So, and people are, are much more intelligent than maybe what they thought in the beginning. So meaning that, yeah, what they thought in Facebook. So meaning that people are seeing now, are starting to realize what we're doing with their data. So they will have to change something to explain people how they use their data. But still, people will want to connect, will want to have an internet social life. So, yes, I think they'll change, but they will still exist. Matthew, thank you, Raina. Last word to you. Go. Fight for our rights. Fight for our rights. It's about <laughs> all of protecting us. yourself, all of us. Yeah, yeah? but and all of us. Like Nadim said, yeah? Yes, but again, I mean, that's, that's what he was saying very, very um, rightly. Everyone has their own perspective and we have had, you know, NGOs fighting for this, um, lobbyist groups or whatever fighting for that. And if people decided to band together and, you know, decide to have like a common front, I know that I'm some, somehow dreaming here, you know, because there is a lot of ego also in those uh, in those sides. But still, what's the in, the in the bigger or biggest scheme of things, what's important? That my NGO gets a lot of money or that we prevent a privately held company from becoming a state Facebook outside of the state? Facebook is funding all of the privacy NGOs right now in the space. If you, if you look at the Arab world, if you look at the US, if you look at uh, all of them. Of I, I could listen to this all night, but we need to end it there. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thanks to our guests. Now, let me remind you who they are. Matthew Guerin of uh, Wavestone, uh, Reina Stamboliski of um, Defensive, Lab Defensive Lab Agency and from the uh, NYU Paris Professor of Computer Science, Nadine Mikovesi. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thanks and thank you much. for watching. Thank you. thank you. Stay with us. More to come here on uh, France 24.